St Mary's have been great to me. They have really brought the expertise of every different division we have in our school uh, to help me achieve my goal. With St Mary's University, anything is possible. My name is Paul Hoff and I'm a lecturer on the Health and Exercise Science Programme and I also work in a Human Performance Laboratory as a Sports Scientist. The Health and Exercise Science Programme looks at both the promotion of health and physical activity in order to prevent, treat and manage chronic conditions such as obesity and diabetes. Uh, the other element of the programme looks at the practical elements of exercise and how exercise can be programmed for individuals to improve their conditions or prevent them from getting conditions such as heart disease uh, in the first place. So we're here in the physiology lab and I'm about to do a VO2 max test with Paul. I'm really not looking forward to this, uh, it's not my forte, but I'm actually quite excited to see how well I can really push myself. In order to do this type of challenge that Phil's uh, undergoing, you need a good level of uh, cardiorespiratory fitness and that just means that you're um, cardiovascular and respiratory system are able to efficiently deliver oxygen to the muscles. So individuals with a higher level of cardiorespiratory fitness will find uh, long durations of exercise much easier than individuals with lower levels of cardiorespiratory fitness because they're working at a, a relative lower percentage of their maximum. So this type of test is important not just uh, for performance but it's actually really uh, important for health as well. When Phil first came into the lab, we took his height and his body mass, which is a standard procedure, so we get the characteristics of the subject we're testing. We then fitted Phil um, with a ECG, which stands for electrocardiogram, and this measures um, Phil's heart rate response to exercise. So the main one we're interested in there in is, is, is heart rate during the test. Then we got Phil doing a warm up on the ergometer, so just to get him used to the, uh, the cycling, wearing the mask as well, because that can feel a bit alien at first if you've not worn one during exercise. And then once we'd uh, got him familiarized with the ergometer and the mask, we started the test. Um, so the ergometer, what happens there is it's electronically controlled and it progressively adds more um, resistance. So therefore pedaling gets harder. So it, in essence, it's essentially like cycling up a hill and it just gets harder and harder throughout the test until Phil could no longer continue. So at that point, um, Phil uh, was consuming the maximum amount of oxygen he was able to, and that was his VO2 max. So what we're looking for in that type of test is fatigue between eight and 12 minutes. And Phil's test was uh, just under nine minutes. So it was what we call a good test. Phil's uh, VO2 max was comparable to um, an average that we'd see in the uh, everyday population. So it wasn't quite up there with some of the endurance athletes we work with. Um, but one of the things that Phil's going to be doing over the next few weeks is, is working on this through doing uh, cardiovascular um, training on a regular basis in order to improve his uh, aerobic fitness. That was just as hard as I thought it was going to be. I'm actually quite disappointed. Yes, I've got average VO2 values, but I want to be more than average. That's what I'm really striving for, so I can really achieve something on this mountain. So I've got a lot of work to do. On the whole, I think um, Phil's well prepared for this challenge, as he is. And over the coming weeks, um, his training's really going to prepare him um, to do well. And I'm sure he's going to uh, complete the challenge without problems.